Hello people, and welcome back to episode 56 of Begusia, the City of Skylines build guide. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. And we are starting today's episode in more mapping software, as we've done a few times in this series. And the reason for that is because in today's episode, as you've probably seen by the title, we are going to be working on a hillside residential area. Now the first thing that kind of pops into my mind when you think of hillside residential will probably be like LA and Beverly Hills. So we're going to kind of take a look at how it flows into that kind of layout from the, the downtown grid. So I'm using OpenStreetMap here, uh, which was a recommendation on the live stream. So thanks very much for uh, pointing this tool out. It's really good. And uh, it highlights just how kind of dramatic the shift in road layout is here. So we can kind of see, you know, if we're looking at West Hollywood, you've got these very rigid kind of classic American grid cities. Like uh, LA has a lot of this stuff, you can see it all here, it's all very, very strict grid. However, as we begin to kind of flow into Beverly Hills, look how crazy that the road layout gets. There's almost no symmetry at all, lots of different shaped houses in here. And then if we jump into Google Earth, you can kind of see how drastic this switch is. So looking again, kind of from the bird's eye view, we have this very strict grid. And then all of a sudden, it flows into this windy hillside kind of flow. It's pretty crazy. And um, I imagine, you know, the kind of the civil engineering to get these houses to fit on this hillside. Um, it's pretty crazy. And we can kind of picture how this is going to work in Baguzu because we have our downtown where the residentials sit and the stadiums are. And then we have a big hillside that currently has nothing on it. And even kind of looking at the ridges of this of this mountain you know there's there's houses even in here like look at this one right here he's like built into the side so you can just kind of get a sense of how it looks here they're all over the place there's very little symmetry in here if any at all to be honest so definitely uh, some great inspiration uh, from uh, google earth and an open street map uh, for today's episode so I'll leave links to both of these in the description if you haven't already used them to kind of help plan your cities they are all both amazing tools to, uh, to help get your cities looking a little more realistic. But let's go ahead and dive into City Skylines. Hey guys, welcome back into Begusia. So we had a little look at uh, Street View and Google Earth before the start of today's episode and uh, that's what we're going to be using to kind of construct today's little project. Uh, during the live stream in the last week, I think it was last Tuesday, last Wednesday, uh, we carried on expanding the town away from the cliffside town right here. And uh, you know, it was kind of filling in some suburban patterns, did some nice little kind of detailing with some awkward empty spaces we had, used some of the part life props here, and uh, this area turned out really nicely. And uh, still a little more to do here, which we'll, uh, we'll definitely pick up kind of this area in another episode as well, with uh, some of the recommendations about detailing the beach here. So uh, yeah, still lots of nice little projects to come. However, it's time to head over to our hillside. And uh, it's been a long, long time since we've been here. <laughs> um, this is like our old residential block right here, our kind of entertainment centre. And uh, yeah, it's finally time to do something with this hillside. So if we kind of look at the map boundaries, we've got a big old space to fill here. And I imagine we'll bring kind of the hillside residential probably up until like this line here, maybe this little cliff face. So we've got a nice big area to fill and that's what we're going to be doing. So when we were looking at kind of the, the road layouts here, we had kind of a main road and uh, we've got one here. We might get a little bit of traffic here where the uh, the tall booths are, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll kind of worry about that at a later date. So let's downgrade this road into the six lane with grass and then we're going to carry him on for a little bit here. Let's kind of bring him level. So we do have another road here as well. So I wonder if we should actually plop in another roundabout here. So let's rework this junction a little bit. So we'll hook these two back together. And then bring this guy in as well. They're a little bit off centre, but uh, it's something that we can cope with. Super. So we might end up downgrading these six lanes into two into uh, four lanes. We'll kind of see how they perform. But for right now, we just want to kind of get the 
that main road built in. Okay, and then I imagine this will probably... Let's go our curve road tool and begin to kind of curve back into here. Looks like there's a nice little point to bring this road out from there. And then we can hook in like that. So because the roads that we looked at are so windy and they kind of, you know, they're very unsymmetrical or non-symmetrical, whatever the phrase is. <laughs> uh, we're going to use our freeform road here. So we're just going to kind of come out in a straight line in a couple of places. So kind of looking, these roads don't really uh, come together until they're much higher up the hill. So kind of, you know, they're not meeting kind of like this far down. And they do eventually, so you can kind of come in this road and then come back out this one, but you have to drive all the way up the hill to actually get down there. So let's just kind of begin mapping out something of a little road network. So a little useful tip you can do, if you come into your info views here, and um, there's a little icon here called Terrain Heights. So you can kind of mark out the roads based on the natural contour of the hill. Obviously, if you're doing your own terraforming, then um, you know, you can kind of go with that, but... Now this is all the natural shape of the map that, that comes in here, so we'll kind of we'll kind of follow that to the best of our ability. So let's keep kind of coming up the hill. I want it to be really windy. I actually wonder if we'd be better off with just the roads with grass here. I think the trees might be a little bit overkill. Maybe we'll probably mix and match them, I think. So I want to try and get the, the main road sorted that goes up the, uh, the side of the hill here. So kind of bearing in mind the zoning tiles that we want, I do want to have some fairly big tiles so we don't want to be too tight with the roads because you're going to get some fairly awkward kind of zoning squares to work with which you know so like this we got little little one deeps here so we may push that terrain back a little bit or maybe leave that road as a dead end there as well okay so then let's maybe bring off one here so when we were kind of looking at the the google earth view as well they were very tightly packed in there was very little kind of open space between them so I want to try and replicate that as well. And I'll bring this guy out here like that. So this is hopefully going to be uh, useful for you guys for kind of planning out um, residential patterns that aren't gridded. Because I know a lot of people have difficulty kind of breaking out um, of that kind of traditional grid pattern. So maybe this will be able to provide you with a, a bit of inspiration. And the freeform tool will definitely help with that as well. So I am keeping all my snapping on for this. I'm gonna just keep taking a look from the bird's eye view as well, just to see how you kind of how you're progressing. So we've got a little bit of a hard cliff face here. Let's maybe do a touch of terraforming. Let's just soften this out. So let's grab our. I think it's called soften terrain, is it? Yeah, it is. So if we soften the terrain, we can just take a little bit of the harsh edge off of this mountain here. So just push him down. Probably here as well. Yeah. So let's carry on filling it out. Not sure how interesting this will be to watch, but uh, <laughs> hopefully you guys can kind of learn something from it. It's not something I've ever really done before as well, trying to recreate um, kind of a suburb like Beverly Hills, you know? Okay, so we're reaching kind of a very, kind of a quite a chunky cliffside right now. So I want to kind of look at those houses that were right on kind of the ridge. I'm going to soften this out a little bit as well and see if the game will let us place a road here. We might just be too steep. I think we are going to be. So it looks like we'll have to come across on the side angle here. That's fine. And we'll keep bringing them around. So I want to kind of factor in those natural shapes. I don't want to make it look too terraformed. So we kind of have some nice tight turns like this. 
again. Where I'm thinking of having most of my zone in, I'm leaving these curves fairly relaxed just so we get those uh, larger zone in tiles in. Okay, and then we'll bring this guy around the contour. Have him carry straight on. And then have a little intersection here. Okay, so it's spaces like this here. So you see, if we were to zone these squares in, we're going to have a big empty space here. So I want to make sure that I try and avoid that as best as possible. So we'll bring some zonings in like that. You know, it's all kind of touch and go. Don't be afraid to kind of delete roads and, and have to draw them in again. I think we'll leave that space empty. That's going to be okay. And we'll probably hook in there as well. So see how much room we still have to go here. So let's carry this one on. So if you're looking to kind of break out of that, that grid pattern, then you know the, the mapping softwares, which don't forget, both of them are linked below. And um, if you want to check them out, then you know they, they can be so useful for, for stuff like this. We'll probably be able to do some nice things with kind of walking paths as well, kind of just to help get people from kind of one thing to the other side. But we'll kind of see how that turns out. Yeah, let's kind of talk about the zoning techniques that we're going to use here. So, obviously the biggest the house will grow is 4x4. Four four. And, uh, you know, that's going to give us kind of the bigger, fancier houses that kind of generate with swimming pools and... Yeah, once they hit the higher levels, they get kind of, you know, nice little, like, terracotta roofs and stuff. You know, they look really nice. So uh, we're going to try and squeeze in most of them as we can. So let's kind of start towards the bottom, and then we'll kind of move up towards the rest of the hill. Let's also go ahead and turn off these traffic lights on the main road. This is just going to slow people down. Let's take that there. And then we'll also turn the lights off here as well. So people can just flow. We'll kind of see what happens. So this main road is already getting a lot of use, which is interesting. So I'm guessing you know, this is now um, a really fast way. So this is over by the tram interchange. And uh, the baseball stadium here. So already it looks like Sims are preferring this route. As opposed to uh, taking the highway over here. Which is interesting. Okay, so I think with this kind of main road here, we'll have a whole bunch of commercial. Nice big rows of commercial all the way along. Probably up to here as well. And then up to there. And then what we'll do is we'll jump into our parks and plazas. And then maybe let's grab a couple of little different assets to kind of fit between these. Let's go for maybe a, uh, one of the gardens. Let's get a little dog park in here on the corner as well, or the playground. Uh, one right there too. And a tropical garden. Sure, why not? So I'll just dot in a couple of little assets and kind of see how this kind of main road starts to take shape. Okay. So just getting some nice little commercial assets generating in here. I don't think this is a too bad of a place for, for kind of like a high street. You know, the, the terrain generation isn't too bad here with the way the buildings are spawning in. Maybe this one's a little bit kind of lopsided, but you know. There are only so many things you can do with the terrain generation in City Skylines kind of unmodded. So we'll just kind of bear with it. And then we're going to start getting in. So kind of the tiles I'm happy to do are going to be these 4x3s. Obviously any big chunks we get like this where we can get 4x4s in, this is going to be really good for us. So obviously you just save these two until the, the two adjacent ones come in. And then looking at the houses in City Sky, in, a, in actually kind of LA for itself, not every house has kind of a city view. You know, they look into each other from across the road. So we're not going to be too bothered about zoning up just the ones that are kind of facing out into the downtown here, right? Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> so again, we'll carry on going. We'll leave the game on three speed here as well so we get a, a little faster. So if you want to kind of draw these ones in, you know, you can. But I'm going to go ahead and detail those out with paths. What I'm going to do is kind of get all my big shapes in first. The ones that I am happy for them to kind of grow. 
uh, as large as they can. And then we'll kind of look at kind of those awkward empty spaces towards the end of the episode as to how you can fill those out and make them look a little more natural. Because uh, we do have some very awkward space here. So right here we made us kind of build a little, just like a little kind of false park using some, some walking paths and some nice tree decorations here. A few of the big rock assets perhaps as well. So you know it was it was too steep to get any kind of major any major roads in there. So I thought you know let's do some kind of park assets. So you know these type of houses here, you know as these guys level up, they'll obviously look more and more impressive. We're already getting some swimming pools generating in here, which is exactly what I want. But don't be afraid to kind of zone like this and then just delete the ones that you're not happy with in the end. You'll like, you'll find yourself free in the long run. So that's kind of my technique for zoning on these awkward shaped tiles here. So I'm going to go ahead and carry on zoning and uh, we'll kind of cut back once we hit something interesting. <laughs> okay guys, so we have a little bit of a hillside community developing and hopefully you can see how this pattern is going to start repeating further and further up the side of this mountain here. So kind of looking at it from the bird's eye view, you know, we're kind of getting some of these nicer houses coming in now. I've got a little bit of a swimming pool here. Now uh, they're kind of like some smaller ones here don't really fit the theme so if you are playing on the PC, then plop the growables mod would be tremendously helpful for doing stuff like this. So if you are on PC, certainly recommend that one. You know, really nice kind of fancy houses like this would be good. Like a little uh, little green terrace out here, some nice uh, kind of sun lounger stuff. The, uh, the slope of the garden is a little bit dangerous, but um, you know, you can kind of see how as we go further and further up, these guys are going to have really nice views over the city. You see kind of the observation tower here, you've got the stadium area right beneath. You can see the real high-rise downtown over here. And, uh, further afield, you've got kind of the uh, Bagusia Bay Bridge. Uh, the downtown over here, fishing village, observatory right up in the distance over there. You see the national park from here too, so it's going to have like a really nice view for the Sims. Not that it makes a difference, but... Uh, you can kind of see this theme developing. So whilst the rest, obviously, you know, this is a very slow process, you will be waiting kind of a long time for your residential demand to obviously keep, you know, going up and down as you fulfill it. You need to add a bit more commercial and, you know, just kind of the general demand of city skylines. Um, but let's kind of talk about this space here. So obviously it was too steep for any kind of roads. So if we don't do anything with it, it's just going to be kind of an empty no man's land uh, between kind of these two little roads here so we'll have a little talk uh, about how we can kind of fill this area out so I'm going to use the nature reserve path of decorations and I'm just going to come up kind of in a nice windy nice windy path here's our freeform tool we're just going to keep kind of winding up the side of the hill let's keep it going like this Kind of put some stuff in there. So we kind of have a few of these that climb up. So we'll maybe have one that comes out this way as well. Again, just kind of keep those tight, windy curves going. So it could almost be like a like a mini nature trail, I suppose. And let's come back and make sure that they're kind of not too steep. Like right? you know, that's that's a pretty realistic slope, I think. And we have a kind of a lot of these mountainous little paths where where I live in the UK, and I'm assuming there will be some in. Beverly Hills as well. So we kind of have one that kind of comes through here as well. And then we'll continue just to bring down in a couple of sections. So that's given us a nice pattern. So let's go ahead and fill it out with some uh, rock assets first of all, some of the larger ones. So we'll kind of scroll towards the end here. I've got some nice kind of big features here. So these guys, they won't terraform the map around them. They will just kind of place. So maybe we could have a couple that kind of lean over the road like this. I don't think that looks too bad. You know, kind of, you would imagine having a, you know, a danger of falling rock sign on this road. <laughs> it might be a little bit of a safety hazard. So we're carrying on placing some of these larger ones within these open spaces that we've got. And what this will do, it will just kind of fill out that that empty space that you end up with a lot of time building in City Skylines. It's something I'm not really a fan of. 
you know, I try to like to fill them out as, as best that I can. So I'm just kind of placing these major rock assets, keep taking a look at them. So how would the redwoods look in this area, I wonder? I think it kind of fit the theme best. So I'm not going to use kind of my tree bush tool for this. I want to really kind of space these larger trees out and then with the tree bush tool we'll, we'll fill in some smaller trees, you know, kind of think about how nature works itself. You know, the taller trees, you know, they push themselves to the top of the canopy and they get more sunlight. And then, um, you know, kind of the smaller, almost runt of the litter trees will... Uh, will sit towards the bottom of the canopy. So let's move down a size and then we'll grab some of the the tree with leaves. And then just with the brush tool, obviously if you don't have the brush tool, then uh, you can just kind of place these in. And then we'll just add kind of a little splatter of these here and there. So obviously kind of things like this, they don't really make a difference in kind of the performance of the city, but in terms of the looks, you know, rather than just leaving this space empty, you can tell it's just a little bit of a... I guess it's kind of like a mini nature reserve, right? You may even use some of the nature reserve props. Let's take a look at those. So let's go for the nature reserve, and I think we'll probably add some fencing in here as well. So let's have a little look. So maybe right up alongside all these rocks right here. Kind of up towards the edge of the path. How does that look? Yeah, so that's another nice little layer of detail. Now, let's maybe kind of put a couple of breaks in this fence so it's kind of like, you know, it's not solid all the way around. It's um, almost where maybe some rocks have fell through and kind of crushed the fence down. So it's a little bit fractured as it kind of climbs the side of the hill and this will just be a really nice kind of you know green oasis to fit within all this new residential that's about to kind of spawn upon the side of the hill. Let's have a look what else. I don't think I really want any any tents in here do we maybe? So obviously I have to make this an actual nature reserve and I don't think I want to do that. So I think we'll just kind of stick with the actual props that we can just place in kind of by hand, so maybe we can have a little sign here at the front, just like that, and uh, a little light. And then maybe we can add in a couple of these little benches as like little viewpoints where people can maybe stop for a picnic in this woodland. So we'll have a couple of little benches here. Let's see what else, obviously. <laughs> Could put a, a kayak in there. <laughs> Might be a little strange to have a, a kayak up this high. Let's um maybe a little outhouse and a well. It's like the well's actually floating. It's like the uh, the prop isn't overly happy. And then maybe like a little telescope as well, so these guys can kind of look out. There's very really tiny details like that will. Always help with bringing your city to life a little bit more. And then I think kind of with the bushes we'll just go for a, a larger prop size and kind of drop some of these in. Maybe a couple of the larger ones as well. So just kind of add in to that kind of nice overgrown kind of mountainside path theme. So we're kind of doing something a little bit like that. It's very minimal. It's using all kind of the uh, the base game assets, but it just gives us a nice little point of interest in amongst all this kind of very messy, endless uh, zoning. So it's a nice little feature, I think. Okay, guys, so the hillside community is developing nicely. You can see, you know, we've still got a little more zones to fill out, but we've got a little bit of commercial demand, so I thought we could maybe have a little discussion about what we want to do with kind of this space here. And this kind of screams out, you know, unique building, <laughs> I think. So let's kind of have a little look at some road infrastructure. So we deleted what we put in previously, because you know, it looked a little bit messy and we'll kind of got some, some nice open spaces to squeeze some cool things in here. So I think we'll carry this road out on an angle and we'll have this main avenue 
let's see, let's continue up until this point, I guess. That seems okay. So let's have a look at what unique buildings we've still yet to kind of use. Um, we have the Bird and Bee Haven, but don't want to use that just yet. Let's have a little look. We do still have the Aviation Club that we've yet to use. Maybe we could place this in here. We do still have actually the uh, the Theatre of Wonders. Let's, have a, let's place this thing down and see what this looks like. Okay, yeah, so we could definitely... It's not too tall. So I think it can definitely kind of fit the, uh, the idea here. And I think it'd be kind of nice surrounded by a bunch of different park assets. So let's kind of have a little, a little play with this idea. Let's come out with a four lane road. We'll come out right here and then we'll bring him out like that. So let's see, let's have a little look at how he's going to fit in. So it's a pretty cool looking asset. And then do we want to box this in with four lane roads? I think we'll switch to a tree two lane. And we'll draw a nice little box in around him. Let's make sure we get there. Let's turn off the road guideline snapping so we don't snap onto something we don't want to. Okay, and then we'll turn off all these traffic lights because this is just going to Cause people to back up for no reason. Okay. So that's it. we need to bring these guys some water. Let's make sure they're all happy. I wonder if we can do a nice commercial specialization around this thing as well. Kind of see what happens. So how about two of these parks either side of it? We don't really use these park assets anymore. Haven't really placed one for a long time. All right, guys. So let's carry on with our little park feature that we've got going on here. So I definitely think I want some commercial specializations around this. And I think I'm probably gonna go green cities and we'll get the local and organic produce stuff uh, in amongst this building. So let's have a little look at doing some stuff with that. How would it look if we switched to Gravel Road from here? I wonder if that's something we could do. Let's try it. So let's kind of stick to some measurements here. Let's come out by... Let's go to 15. Okay, so I'm not sure how this is going to look. <laughs> We're just going to kind of do this on the fly and see what happens. Let's hook this back into the main road. Let's move this elder care building along a little. Let's just uh, plop him there for right now. And then we'll come out on a curve. And then we'll hook in like that. Oh, we have no power. My apologies. Let's just um, let's place in, place in some random park asset that will hook the power back through. There we go. Okay. So I guess we'll continue this little gravel road pattern. Gravel road is something I always tend to neglect towards the end of a city. I don't know about you guys. Okay. 
we'll keep playing with it. Uh, let's go ahead and hook the rest of this road network in right here. So we'll maybe have... We'll have a one-way road there. And then... I think what we'll do is we'll... We'll join a one-way system in here as well. Let's make sure that the traffic gives way on the one-way road. It's crazy to see how much use this is already getting. There are um, a lot of people preferring this route, even actually to get to the downtown here. They're choosing there. This crossroads may get a little busy. We'll have to keep our eye on this. Looks like there is traffic coming down this road. May switch this to a, a one-way. I think we will do that, actually. Let's um, let's go for the tree road. And then we'll have it as a one-way flow system. And then people have to head back the other way. So it's a nice... It's almost like a little expressway out of the city, I guess. And I really want them to be using this kind of bridge interchange here to, to move between the different areas. You know, if they want to get into the city, this is where they have to head. Well, let's have a little look at some specializations. So we're just going to kind of mark out a new district here using the, the road guidelines. Snap onto the roads. And then we'll give this guy the local and organic produce. And then let's get some nice stuff building in here. So we'll go for our big chunky 4x4s on the corner right here can maybe even get a water feature in here as well somewhere maybe kind of this this little arena here or maybe here I feel like some water would work really nicely in this area right, we'll see let's carry on that gravel network so obviously the contrast between the the gravel and the roads is quite harsh but I don't think I'm too affected by it Let's maybe have some, a little bit of an angle there, just to try and break up that grid. And then we'll go for some more 4x4s right here. So I want this place to be kind of quite rigid in the way that it's going to look. Just kind of winging it here as we go along, just to kind of see what new ideas we can come up with. You know, it's nice to not kind of repeat the same things. So, nature reserve path, of course, we've been using it in this area a lot already. So, we'll carry on using it. And uh, it's going to look really nice with the local organic produce buildings as well. Nature reserve path is certainly a favourite of mine. Bring them in through there too. And then maybe through here as well. And then obviously through there too. So let's kind of have a look at how the main road is developing with these green specialization buildings here. Okay, Third of Wonders definitely serves as a nice centerpiece for something for something quite green. So I make sure that we're not kind of too out of place here. Definitely think some kind of water feature. I'm just kind of struggling as to think where to put that. Maybe here, in this kind of awkward shape that we've got going on. Or do we want it to be quite, quite rigid in itself? I think maybe behind the Theatre of Wonders would be a nice little space for it. Let's go ahead and try that. Let's get some water in here. So we'll go and sink our terrain. And that should be deep enough, I think. And then we'll just push this thing out. Just make sure we're kind of looking at the bird's eye view. And then we'll just make a little bit of a lake. We'll soften it out as well. And kind of make it as rectangle as possible. Maybe even try and get some keys in here as well. Okay, and then we'll grab our, our water tool. Obviously we'll experience a little bit of flooding, but you know, it wouldn't be City Skyline without flooding, would it? Okay, so we fill this ditch in. Let's bring the water level up a touch. 
and then we'll just kind of see how this develops. Now I wonder what the possibility of putting keys in here are. I imagine it's going to be pretty difficult, but we'll try it anyway. And then we'll see how the keys want to behave themselves. Okay, that is quite cute. I do like that. Let's, um, let's raise the water level a touch more. There we go, just about there. We should be able to get some nice little, uh, nice little paths and decoration around this thing. So let's talk about kind of some little walking path networks again. I think we'll switch to the the part path of decoration to this bit right here. I put those together like that. One here as well. So let's just go ahead and stick to the grid for this. Make it easy just to kind of draw in what we want. So obviously you now putting the path up against the side wall like this. It might seem pointless, but it's a nice way of decorating out. Don't be too tight here. Now we should be able to get one through. Let's continue in that fashion. And then we've got some nice zoning squares here as well. I wonder if they're in the district. Yes, they are. Okay. So we'll carry on our local and organic produce zonings here. Let's get some ones in right there. Got some more space developing. And let's kind of see what we get from all these little different areas. But in terms of something to sit at the bottom of our, our hillside town here, it's something nice as well. We've got a nice little view to the downtown from here too. It's definitely going to take a lot of work to get this thing kind of fitting in naturally, but you know, that's what uh, the live streams are for. Okay, so these guys are in the district. We need to make sure that we push that out a little. Let's uh, bring him out up to these roads right here. Alright guys, so there's a lot more residential demand right now to place and all that commercial. So we'll kind of carry on zoning here together. So we'll kind of come into the top of the hillside over here. Make sure we've not missed any major zoning opportunities around around the area. Let's uh, keep mitching around. Uh, so just while we're kind of doing this, I'll talk uh, very briefly. Uh, we've had a few comments on the channel recently asking if we are going to turn the How to Start Your City for 2020 video into a series. And I don't think I addressed it in the actual video itself, but the answer to that question is no. Uh, the reason for it is because that map, Eden Valley, was my first ever Let's Play. So if you guys want to see me build on that map, then you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, you'll be able to find the, the full playlist link on the channel. It was a full, like, 45 episode Let's Play series. It, was, uh, it went on for a long time. So that's the kind of the reason why I'm a little reluctant to turn that into a series. It's just because, you know, we've done it before. We've built on that map. And I feel like we would end up kind of repeating a lot of the same themes. You know, kind of the build guide is the main series, and we were talking about this in the live stream uh, last week as well. It's kind of how long we think the build guide will be going on for. I imagine we'll probably hit about episode 60 before, and then we'll obviously have the final farewell tour as well, uh, and maybe a couple of first person transport buildings, uh, first person transport videos in there as well. So we're coming towards the end, is the answer, and there will be a new series on the channel. Obviously, it's something will come in to replace the build guide. Uh, yeah, just wanted to kind of mention a little bit of a channel update there for you guys. So the Tutorial City is not becoming its own series. It was just to showcase the start. And uh, yeah, you guys can see a follow up of that in the live stream that was uploaded uh, the day after. So yeah. But unfortunately the build guide is coming to uh, to an end, which is, is sad. I've really enjoyed this map. Okay. We're starting to get some nice little houses in here now. Especially these ones. These ones look really great. Not very rich. Let's have a little look at the views from these guys over here on the hill. Yeah, it's pretty nice, isn't it? Looking back down onto kind of the, the lower town as well with the high street. These guys have a, a really nice view. You can see the cargo hub there too. Really nice. 
Okay guys, well that's going to feel like a good place to go ahead and jump into a detailing time lapse. We're going to uh, tidy up this thing up a little bit here and continue kind of filling in some of these spaces with some little detailing and uh, maybe a touch more zoning as well. We'll kind of see how things develop. So, we'll be right back. Alright guys, that is going to do it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, a like below is always appreciated. Equally as much if you didn't enjoy it, please feel free to leave a dislike and let me know why down in the comments below. We've worked on quite a, little, uh, quite a bit today and uh, we're working on kind of filling in this uh, last final corner of the map. And uh, we've got some nice ideas. I really like the way the gravel roads turned out in and amongst all that kind of grey concrete. And uh, we'll definitely carry on expanding and detailing this in the live stream this week. So if you want to kind of see how that turns out, then don't forget to stop by. It'll more than likely be Thursday. Uh, although make sure you're in the Discord and follow me on Twitter and you'll find out when and where the live streams are happening. But that is going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.